built something pretty incredible. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Part of me, you know, enjoyed the, the restoration process more than driving, but uh, today's like, you know, days like this, it's certainly fun to get out in it. This is a brand new E30 M3, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the car complete, non-running, had some rust issues from Eastern Washington. And uh, originally was just get it running mode, which quickly spiraled out of control and uh, glass out, carpet out. Picked up the car February 2020, drove it for the first time about six months ago. So two and a half year restoration. All of it was done in my garage, with the exception of the paint work. I R and R'd everything, learned how to zinc plate the bolts and get that factory finish that BMW had in, in the 80s. So then, is this your first Euro car build? It is. You know, it was in the uh, Honda scene, Subarus, GTRs, you know, and I'd done several SEMA builds, the wild wide bodies, stuff like that. And this just, as soon as I got into this, res the restoring aspect sucked me in. Yeah, so yeah, this is the first Euro I've done. I think hunting the parts were just as fun as the build itself, I think. You know, the JDM world, we had lots of parts at our disposal 10, 15, 20 years ago, but nowadays it's that's not the case with these. So then, you got this 2020, and the E30 M3 at the time was already very expensive. Yep. And now it's even more so. Yep. How was the condition of the car that you got? Condition of the car, you know, believe it or not, it was in really good shape. It had a couple of panels that had been repainted, so that was kind of the deciding factor to, to reshoot the car and not keep it single stage. The car was complete, non-running, had a couple issues at the cowl with the rust. And it was an old coworker that sold it to me. He kept his word, gave it to me at a very reasonable price uh, compared to the current market. He knew I was gonna go pretty wild with it and not flip the car. So I think that that certainly helped. But I was mind blown. You know, I had to have an appraiser come out for insurance purposes just to cover the car. And I was expecting low six figures and that that was blown out of the water. You know, they, they appraised the car at $228,000. Right now, replacement as it sits. value as it sits uh, with 200? Grundy's 228 replacement value. So that included, which was cool. They included a lot of my labor hours and how do they calculate that being done at home? It's not shop rate, but we gave them a 1,400 hour mark that I did, which I think was light personally, and all the receipts for all the the parts and and labor and that's what they came out with. This concourse level, he said it was you know one of five cars that he'd ever graded like that uh, in this area. So then. If somebody did come with 230 grand, would you sell it? Yeah, tough. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a not holding it for investment, but I think it would be stupid to sell the car or anything less right now with the way the market's going. Mm -hmm. uh, can, if I keep this the car in this condition, which it's gonna be tough because I do like driving it now, um, who knows where we're gonna be in 10, 15, 20 years. You mm -hmm. know, and it would be really cool to hand that down to a to, to you know future generation, you know. Well, so let's start on the outside. Is this a respray? Yeah, so everything on the car, the whole car is resprayed. The headlights are hella Schwartz. They're the blacked out headlights that are a Sport Evo trim, basically, a Sport Evo grills. The exterior of this car looks and is, for the most part, OEM outside of the badges and a respray. So like you were able to source new badges? So that badge is actually, you know, BMW came out with their new heritage emblems, but if you hear it, Think, think, think. Mm -hmm. That's actually metal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's brass, hand and laid, hand enameled from a guy in the UK. Was able to get source those six months before BMW actually released those. Uh, nice. And BMW's version is plastic. <laughs> the wheels, obviously, it did some slight suspension upgrades. It's got KWV threes on it, E36 front control arms to push the wheels a little more forward in the wheel well. And I've got a set of BBS E50 magnesiums on it currently. I go back and forth between those and I said TE37s that I really enjoy. As much as I like TEs, I have to say, yeah, this just sits nice. And I feel like it's kind of hard to pull off a 17 on this car. It is, especially with unmolested fenders. These fenders are not rolled. That's something that I did not want to do. I didn't want to I didn't want to tuck the fenders up. Get a little better fitment if I did, but again, I think virgin fenders are something that's sought after in these cars nowadays. Yeah. The one thing that you know we probably won't be able to see on camera is you know the underneath of the car is just as pretty as is the up to upside. You know we spent 15 hours dry ice blasting when we resprayed the car. They they actually mimic the factory spray pattern, the overspray patterns that go down the side of the car, 
you know, we schlutzed everything and then threw up overspray on the bottom of it, you know, on a... So how much did you take this down? Like, was oh, this a every, bare shell? Bare shell, yeah. It, it had a uh, set of wheels on it and the suspension we pulled off at the body shop, but I sent it up on a flatbed with no glass, doors off, trunk off, every, every clip in the engine bay was removed, everything, every bolt, and the lock assemblies were re-zinc plated, they were re-restored with new bumper stops. Like I said, it, a lot of the little components turned into its own little project. And then for reassembly, I had a, had a whole you know, garage full of new parts to reinstall. This is not a five foot car, mm -mm. A four foot car. This is like a six inch. Yep. Like you can Hit look at every single part. I can't believe you drive this on the street. Without PPF yet. Is that something in the future? In the I new think future? so, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got a little bit of rash on the side skirts that I'm kind of starting to see. And I'm sure as I drive it more, you know, especially on the highways, you know, I find myself pacing 100, 150 feet behind cars and, you know, I get cut off and I get a rock. That's my fear. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to PPF the whole car, personally. It is so nice. So then, did it come with this red? Yes, so this is the factory Zinna Barat red. They have another version, which is Henna. It's a little more orange. But yeah, no, we kept the, the factory Zeno color. And then, so tell me about the exhaust. So the exhaust is a Stromung rear box muffler uh, with a VSR catted center section. Uh, it's surprising to hear myself say catted. Yeah, I put a catalytic converter on my exhaust. As we grow up, we don't want to smell the fumes and gives it a nice burble. So this really is like OEM plus plus. Yes, yeah. You know, and then a lot of the details that you don't, you know, a lot of people don't pick up on, you know, we've got Repop quality assurance stickers which were given at the Port of Houston when the car is originally delivered. All of the decals and, and Repop sticker work in here. Along so with new, does somebody make all of these? Correct, as long, same with the re replacement VIN stickers, which are absolutely identical to factory, which is a little scary for some. So um, like all of these? All of that, yep. All of that is remanufactured. To show you, continue on with the repop stickers. Yeah. This, that's repopped, that's repopped. This anti-tamper sticker that he does is also from the same gentleman. Which, and uh, it's actually functional. And it's actually functional. I, I put it on the wrong way once and tried to pull it off and it does not come off. So I had to have him send me a new one. Oh no. You know, and the little details like the engine harness was all re redone in Raychem. I pulled the entire engine bay harness out uh, deoxidized the pins, every connector was removed, replaced, uh, and then labeled to give it a little bit of a motorsport look. But as we all know, 20, 30 year old engine harnesses are extremely brittle. So now it's all Raychem. This is your hobby. Yeah. This is not yep. what you do for work. Absolutely not. No, by, by trade, I'm an IT guy. I'm in technology, have been for a little over 20 years, and the self-satisfaction you get as an IT guy isn't really there. You know, you get, you, you get an ad boy occasionally, you get a nice email, but I think this is what I enjoy because I get to see something that I've done myself with my own hands, and I see a finished product, and this is what you get. This is a brand new car. I mean, through and through. I'm assuming you probably used a lot of OEM things that you could oh, yes. reuse, oh, yeah. but then all the OEM stuff was refinished. Yep, so all the plastics in here, the AFM, the air box, the, sh this, the shielding for the fan is all original. It's all, these are all 30 year old plastic parts that I actually reflowed with almost a, it's a, it's a plastic refinisher, but it, what it does is it actually kind of melts the top layer and it, re it, it, you end up with a finished product that's not oxidized, it's not chipped. Um, so, you know, I'm assuming if you keep going, you'd probably melt it, but you know, a light finish of it and uh, that's what you end up with. And then they hit it with the flat black and uh, it's, it's what you get. I mean, right, versus just sanding it down correct, and repainting correct. it. You I, actually melt a layer of it yep. off. That's just taking it to the next level. Another detail that most people are never gonna see unless they point it out is you see the fender bolts here. Mm. If you feel under there with your finger, mm. it's actually got plastic nubs on all of them to protect you, which BMW did back in the 80s. Oh, Nobody wow. has those on their cars anymore, but all the fender bolts have a plastic protector. So if you're working on it, you don't snag your finger, you don't cut yourself. No, a judge isn't even gonna see that. You know? Right, but, well, because, <laughs> so if you take this off, yep. then you lose that And you forever. lose that, bingo. Yeah, right. so if, if a car doesn't have those on, we know the fender's been off or the, somebody pulled it off. It's just little stuff like that. And, and, and having something to build back to, there was a capsule car in Europe that had those. And there's a few of us that kind of trade notes. 
all of this. All of that. To protect your investment, use genuine BMW parts. Then the other thing that I enjoy is the Autiker clamps on the expansion tank. You know, they're faced correctly. They're not using water hose clamps like most people do. They're actually exactly this Autiker like clamp. This is all facing yep. how it would have Correct. been from the factory, all yeah. of these. This used an or actual hose clamp here from the factory. These here did not. 90% uh, of the cars you see out there have hose clamps on, their, on that fuel regulator, which is something to me that's it shouldn't. So then the engine, did you rebuild it? So what the engine was completely rebuilt from oil pan to valve cover. I didn't do the rebuild myself. I sourced all the parts. The gentleman here, Chuck at CND Engines in Kirkland, did a fantastic job of rebuilding that. I said, give me the motor back timed. That's one thing I don't want to mess with. I want it you know, done correctly. So it's got a set of 284, 276 Schrick cams, 10 and a half to one pistons. We kept the factory crank. So it's still a 2.3 just freshened everything up. Supertech valve train, Evo valve springs. We can rev it, you know, to the factory, you know, 7, 7,500 comfortably. But aside from that, it's a very OE plus motor build. Um, so then with, it, with the hotter cams, it makes more power. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does make more power. I haven't had it on a dyno. And again, I haven't, I didn't baseline the car, but I would guess 200-ish, you know, 210-ish, you know, on a good day. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of power coming from previous cars I've had, but I will say this is more fun to drive than a 600 horsepower GTR, unless you're on an airstrip. <laughs> th this is what you, this is what I love though. Like yeah. you, you went from complete tuner cars yeah. to something like this. This is like a It needs a concourse show. I mean, I, I wasn't around when this was a new car, you know, so yep. I never got to see these as new cars. Yep. Pretty much all of the E30s that I see now have been modified, rusty, destroyed, whatever. Yep. Unless it was a true survivor that was like right. sealed, yep. it wouldn't look like this. No, no. So then did you e even so get the, a new one of cool these? The cool thing on the, uh, the hood insulation, that's actually the factory piece. This is the, the, the piece that was delivered with the car you know, 30 years ago. It had hair all over it, had bugs and dust. Um, what I did was I, I did a light power wash with it and then scrubbed it power washed it again, you know, with light, light PSI, and then actually took a torch and burned off all the frays. And cause you have the little horsehair, you know, takeaways, took a torch, burned it all off. And there you have it. How much were you actually able to get in terms of like? So the these, these pins, I was able to, I was able to, to find new pins here. Uh, these clips here, long gone, you can find replacements, but they're black. Uh -huh. These two pieces here, you notice this is kind of yellowed. Yeah. These were the same color as this coupler here, but what I did was I actually took peroxide, something that most women use on their hair, 50 volume or 60 volume peroxide, and put it under a UV light, and that actually takes a lot of the oxidation out. So it went from a yellowy, dingy to a more of a white, opaque. You can see the color difference between you know this this harness and here. Yeah. Uh, and that's literally, I took all these white clips out and stuck them in a bag under a UV black light in the laundry room for two days and, and that was the result. You know, you saying that these are available in black, how did you even know that was the wrong thing? Because I had the originals. Got it. And I'm looking at the originals that came with the car and I've got these new replacements, which look great. They're all black, you know, and I'm like, but this just, it's not correct. The same thing for that washer tank cap right there, the clear opaque cap. The replacement that BMW sells is blue, you know, and it fits mm. on like three different washer reservoirs. Well, that's incorrect. Was able to find a couple of those and I've stashed a few away and actually sent a couple out to some friends that said, you got the wrong washer cap, well, give me your address, so. Well, it's interesting to me at, because there's certain things that you try to keep OEM as possible. Yep but certain things like the wiring where you actually update it. I just wanted to do that. Like future-proofing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then of course, <laughs> another thing is like the clips, you know, the stickers, all that stuff, but then you still went OEM plus yep. with the engine build. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. That was, to me, that was uh, what I wanted. You know, I wasn't building it for a sponsor, wasn't building it for a specific show. Is something that I've wanted to do. I, I always appreciate a, a good looking wiring harness, something that's labeled and, you know, motorsports derived, but obviously it's uh, over the top here. But, you know, these are all, these were vapor honed. The intake throttle bodies were vapor honed. Um, I blew the entire 
this is entire assembly with all the springs. There was over 95 parts. It was like taking apart a watch mm. um, to actually get all those components out uh, was, was a little tough. So And so even the ABS so pump, cool. if you look at the ABS pump over here, it's, oh, yeah. it is a work of art in itself. A lot of these components that I put in the engine bay, I'm like, man, I wish I could just hang them on a wall. It actually says ABS on it. <laughs> it's a Bosch ABS unit. It works when it wants to, right? Huh. So then you blew this apart. Yep, all the solenoids, all. yeah, all this was removed. Top hat was removed, that was re-zinked. Uh, the solenoids, which you can't even see, are a polished zinc now. Um, and a guy named Jordan Surrett actually did that uh, from M Technic. He, you know, he's the ABS genius in the country, and I was, that was one part I did send off to him because. And then new, new, new radiator. radiator of, yep, new with radiator. With the original sticker. With the original sticker, which That's I'm torn. Just, I think I need to just take it off. It's 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 holding on. <laughs> it's for hanging life on right now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what about the glass? Did you have so to So glass, this? Uh, this is, I do have my original front glass. It was a little pitted. Um, I was able to get replacement factory glass from BMW. So I said, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Still says secure it. It's got your right, it's got the right German plant number on it. The factory glass in the rear is still in place. Um, we did remove that, saved it. Um, all of the headliner and the interior, a lot of people glaze over the interior. But if you look at the door panels, and the center console and the seats. So, you know, my, my favorite comment of these car shows, people ask, are these factory seats? No, actually, you know, they, they look like it, but they're orthoped, so they're heated and cooled. The center console has Europameister stitching that matches the door panels. A um, little bit of an OEM plus thing, you know, it's not over the top, but it's also not completely factory. Um, so all of this is all of that's been redone. All of this yep. is redone. All of that's redone, including the rear panels. They match with the stitching. The rear seat's been redone. Um, here we go. How does this move forward? Oh, okay. Got it. So rear seat's redone. This is redone. all new. Yeah, all, all new, yeah. It's my original cushion, but uh, yeah, all new, all new. And it looks the so comfortable. <sighs> it is. I just don't fit back there. This is all new. Did you, what did you do with this? Those are actually available. They were, I had those, they were back order for nine months. Um, I have the original door sills. They needed to go, you know, I, it's the replacements from BMW. They don't look identical to what they did originally, but these are the new BMW replacements for E30s. Um, the driver's side is available for whatever reason, the passenger side, if you want one, it's a nine month wait. Wow. I, uh, apparently everyone else is waiting for their door sills. Did you redo the speakers too? Redo, yeah, I redid the, redid the speakers in the back, uh, including the doors. Uh, those are the original pods, the BMW Premium Sound. Uh, the headliner is all redone. I, I, I got the headliner stitched, uh, but I had to learn how to hang it. I redid the sunroof panel with the pleats. Uh, I mean, I've never done any upholstery work, but uh, I'm good at reading instructions. And, and luckily it, it turned out really, really nice. And that's the original sticker that came. Original run-in sticker that's also a repop from the same guy. Uh -huh. um, cool thing about the detail work, this is the factory head unit that came with the car. Most people aren't gonna know behind the cassette player is actually a Bluetooth module. So it's oh. got a full cantaloupe Bluetooth module that can stream music and take you know, phone calls from the iPhone. Uh, but so, you just wanted to keep it. But I wanted to keep it all look. stock, exactly. Um, the, cl this. the cluster's all blown out and redone. You know, the odometer gearing has all been replaced. The gauge cluster itself has been touched up. The needles were redone. Um, the needles even? Yes, the needles were even redone. Why? Part of the service that he offers. So I sent the cluster out to a guy. It took the better part of a year uh, to get it back, but I mean, I had time. So I just knew some of these pieces needed to go out. But yeah, he repainted the needles all the gearing in any of the odometer and the trip meter. But um, does the needles even wear out from UV or anything? He, you can tell a difference. Huh. You can certainly tell a difference uh, in new, but I don't, I, it's a good question. So then, okay, and then you did this, yep. all this yep. is, is new because it's not like this from huh. OEM at all. No, they're ra leather wrapped ashtray, center console, rear ashtray, and it's it just, like I said, it all flows in with the door panels. 
same stitching color. And then what about this? And that's the Sport Evo shift knob. I don't actually have a dog leg in the car, uh, but I did want the Alcantara Sport Evo shift knob. So that's, that's the one thing that I wish I had was a dog leg, but I mean, it's, you've gone this far. <laughs> might, <laughs> might as, as well, well find one. Might as well. That yeah. might be, that might come next year. Yeah. And then did you get a new so the, one? the the cool thing with that I don't know if many people followed the bring a trailer auction a couple years ago where uh, the factory M tech one steering wheel in a box sold for twenty three hundred dollars that was not this one um, but that same auction prompted a lot of people to go digging through their closets and it s14 member uh, from the special interest group reached out and said hey I've got one of these it belongs in your car because he knew how far we were going and he's like I'll, I'll sell it to you for half of what the bring a trailer auction was and I said absolutely what about the floor mats were you floor mats these ones? are 100 percent original oh these are really? OG floor mats to this car um, I don't drive with them usually I have another floor mat I put on top but from formula drift yesterday at the show yeah these are the original floor mats huh which is pretty wild most of the time this is long gone worn yeah off. right mm -hmm can't get them again i love it i love how much you went through to get this to this point i think that's incredible i appreciate it this is such a cool build it's a time capsule that's for sure i love it so much what about the dash is dash is all original no cracks yet knock on wood because was this a pacific northwest car it was. I'm the third owner. I purchased it from the second owner who purchased it in 2001 out of Aspen. Uh, so it was a Colorado car its first 10 years of life and then was an Eastern Washington car up until uh, 2020 when I moved out here to Seattle. Cool little the E30 check <laughs> panel. It. Yep. It's so cool. Yep. What do people say when you bring this to BMW shows? Most, most people are in awe that the condition, that I was able to get it back to a condition like this. Um, I've heard a couple people tell me it's been over restored. Uh, I hear that, you know, in the, the Ferrari community a lot, you know, the car's over restored. And, what does that even mean? You know, they, they take it where it's better than it would have been uh, from the factory in the 80s. You know, Isn't and, that the point though? That's to me, that's the point. Um, <laughs> But a lot of people say, oh, you know, you should have left the Cosmoline on this or you shouldn't have done this, shouldn't have done that. Well, do it yourself then. Do you think people are gonna do this to the E36? I would not be surprised. I know there's a couple guys that are buying them up, you know, and have 10, 13 of them, you know, E36 M3s, as well as actually the E46 yeah. uh, M3 is taken off in value. And that's something that I thought about picking up and doing a restoration on I even think an Evo 8 restoration would be fun, but that's, that's a different topic for another day. But uh, I mean, because the 36 especially, man, you want to talk about an interior that didn't last the test oh, of time. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. The whole dash, the center console layout is no bueno. Yeah. Yeah, I, everything I, just falls apart. Yeah. The carbon air box adds a little bit of induction sound, which is nice. It sounds great. The exhaust is very clean, not droney at all. Yep. Yep. And that's what I wanted. You know, I didn't want something that's going to sound like, you know, a buzzing, buzzing bee. I had my Honda days. Two hundred and thirty thousand dollars appraisal. I. It's worth every bit of that. I think personally. My wife was uh, quite happy. She said, "Go ahead and do another restoration." <laughs> <laughs> that's the crazy thing is. I would say 99% of the cars you pull up next to, I mean, this is gonna be worth so much more, but it blends into traffic. You know, does, people who don't know will well, just assume what I'm surprised, that it's just an old BMW. Oh yeah, absolutely. The one thing that I was really taken back by at some of these shows recently, and, and even the comments I get on, you know, on the side of the road, is the younger generation of folks really appreciate this car, and I, did not expect that. I was fully expecting the parents, the dads to be, you know, oohed and awed by it. But the amount of 15, 16, 17 year old kids that stop and question and ask questions about it and say, this is their dream car. I mean, yeah. it, it's totally, for us, it was like the Lamborghini Countach, you know, or whatever yeah. was on our wall as a poster. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, but this is interesting in that it's very relevant in pop culture. But also another thing is, this is old to them. You know, That's to true. us, this is like we grew okay. Up with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I I really really been surprised by the. Uh, the people that really enjoy the car, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad they like it, because it's certainly turned out better than I anticipated it. Um, like I said, originally I was just going to get it running, maybe respray the car, and uh, I took a nosedive quickly. <laughs> now look at you. Yep. You know, and, and, and testament to the old show team, our guys at TWC, Jim Pan, Viet, uh, you know, Robert and those guys, you know, they... They've pushed, you know, we, we used to push each other to be the best we could be during our builds, uh, you know, and i kind of taken that uh, to heart here. And there's no reason that you don't have to be competitive to have a, an extremely well-built, thought-out uh, show car. I hate saying show car because it's really not, but... So how many miles have you put on it since the restoration? 868. <laughs> you, you reset it. Well, I haven't reset it. Well, I reset it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. you reset yeah, yeah. it yep, yep. right when you got so, it. So once it hits a thousand, I'm sure it'll we'll, we'll count over. But the chassis itself has 153,000 on it. Um, valid TMU, so there's no mileage discrepancies. It's good that you started one with one that needed the restoration versus like blowing one apart that was already a like cream puff. really clean. Yeah. There's no, you know, the price of entry at those. I don't think warrants that if you're spending sixty or seventy thousand on a car just to get into it and throw another hundred at it. Mm. I think you price yourself out. Um, but if you're able to find a good deal or you know work something out with an individual like I was, um, it starts to make sense. You know, same with an air-cooled Porsche. You know, you're paying eighty or ninety for these things and you have to throw a hundred into it. What's it worth when you're done? Yeah. This is more of a. Pebble Beach car. I agree. I think. Yeah. So, so did you get any recognition from Pit and Paddock yesterday? Like, how did it do at the show? So it did really well. You know, Pit and Paddock is a smaller show. They just had a you know a Best in Show award, which the E30 with the K swap took, which is I think it's well deserving. It's a performance based show. Really. I totally get it. But yeah, the, that white E30 is when it took Best in Show. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then Terry's Integra, which. You know, it's Terry's Integra. Yeah. But again, it's a performance-based show. If we were judging off of points and bolts and items touched, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. But again, that wasn't the right show for it. And I wasn't expecting much, but it was a fantastic turnout. I had to come support the homie, Sam. You know, it's especially at a local show. And I got to watch drifting. So what's, you know. I just, I love this so much. Really, thanks so much for bringing this. Thanks for doing this. This is just so inspirational to people that potentially could do the same thing. You can do it in and your garage. Maybe not even an E30. Maybe yeah. it could be an E36. Anything. The entry level to E36, I'm assuming, is just gonna be a lot easier. Yep. But when you say two and a half years, that was just during your off time because you had your nine to five. But right as COVID hit, and as most tech companies, you know, we all went to work from home, which meant I'm on the laptop in the garage taking Zoom calls and, knocking work out in the morning and taking a couple hours in the afternoon in the garage, you know, really allowed me to balance my time. Otherwise, I would probably still be working on it. The paint is just so good. It yeah, really the guys is that, like the guys, the guys that painted it, you, you probably know, uh, Sean Edwards and Jeff Miller, I apologize, so the old JMI guys. Um, you know, they, they have a soft spot for the E30 M3 and uh, they did a fantastic job. It, <laughs> Especially in this, where you could see all the reflections. I just can't believe how good it is. Ah, cool. All right. Appreciate we, it, we can We can seriously talk, can talk so much more about this car, <laughs> but eventually we have to end the video. But yep. I, I do appreciate you showing us this, and it's really a, a lot of inspiration, I feel like, uh, if you want to dig into one of these. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.